We've got the right bait, the right setup. We just got to come across some fish that are hungry. Oh, fish on, fish on. Here we go. Whoa, 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 big fish. Holy smokes. What a take, guys. This is a big fish. Oh my gosh. Oh, let's get this one up. Stay on, big fish. This is where we're going to try to land him, right here. I love it when it's nice and overcast like this. This is an absolutely awesome time to be out here on the lake. So guys, as always, I was able to get these large shiners from Brummett's Bait and Tackle in Hampton, Tennessee. And I uh, hope you guys will check them out. Automatically, I am not seeing the clouds of bait that I like to see when I'm striper fishing, but we're gonna go look for them, see if we can find them. Ooh, there's a big old mark. Guys, we just went over a big mark at 15 feet. We've got the right bait, the right setup. We just gotta come across some fish that are hungry. Could get really good back here, you don't know. Decent. Oh, fish on, fish on, here we go. Whoa, 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 big fish, holy smokes. Okay, here we go, look at it. Oh my gosh, oh, it's big. All right, guys, we've got a really big fish on. Oh my goodness, let's just peel in line, guys. This is incredible. Oh, what a fish. Oh, let's get this one up. Stay on, big fish. And then we are now cruising. We are now cruising. I've got a wake behind me. My other planter board is now cruising. Oh my gosh. What a take, guys. This is a big fish. Oh my gosh. Oh, the head shakes are insane. Oh. I have to believe this is a striper the way it's pulling the boat, guys. Holy smokes. We're catching up to it, but it's a slow battle. He took down a lot of line. Oh, stay on. And guys, he's just taken me, he's turned the boat completely around and we are going against the wind now. Oh man, the rod tip is just bending and bouncing. Oh, big striper, there we go. He just came up and boiled a little bit. Let me get my net ready. Oh man, guys, that's an awesome fish right there. He's very, very, he's very green still. A lot of energy, but he has pulled the boat quite a bit. Let's see if we can get him. This is where we're gonna try to land him, right here. Oh, nice, nice striper. <laughs> he just got me all wet. Let's see if we can get his head up. If I can get his head into the net, it's game over. Nope, not yet. Oh, ah, he's strong. He is just dogging. He's nose down, he's seen me, he does not like that. Oh my gosh. I'm choking up a bit, guys. Let's see if we can get him landed here. Oh yeah, big, big fish. Get him in the net, yes. We got him, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was tense. Let's get the striper on the boat. Oh, golly. What a big fish, guys. Let's take a look and see where he ate it. Yep. That's good. We can get that out easy. Last thing I like about these, these treble hooks and the planer board combo, even if it goes a little further down in his mouth, it never gets down to his throat, which is nice. Oh, he's biting down on my hand. Whew. Look at that fish, guys. Yes. <laughs> What a beauty. What an awesome, awesome fish. Let's get this guy back in the water and let's go cover some more water. Woo. And <laughs> there he goes. All right, guys. Well, I've been doing a lot of striper fishing this winter time, and I've caught a lot of big striper as well as huge brown trout on a planter board setup, but I haven't gone into detail on how I actually do my setup. So today we're going to do a quick breakdown of exactly what I've been doing. Let me go ahead and show you guys the breakdown so you can use it on your own waters and hopefully catch more fish. Let's start right here. We've got 30 pound braid, and that's kind of just my baseline whenever I'm striper fishing. 20 to 30 pound braid is good. The first thing we're going to do is talk about weights today. It's a bright day, so I've been using heavier weights. I'm using a half ounce weight um, it's just a little barrel weight um, most of the winter I've been using quarter ounce and that gets it down to about 10 to 15 feet deep when you're trolling about one mile per hour and I put on my half ounce weight the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put on my glass bead now it doesn't have to be glass it could be just a standard 
rubber bead, whatever you have at home is fine, but just something that's gonna be able to stop that weight from smashing up against the swivel. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and attach our swivel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a Palomar knot here. Um, everybody has their favorite knots. Mine is a Palomar knot. All I'm gonna do is just make sure that it's, it's attached really, really well onto my main line. Go ahead and cinch that down. Now, whenever you're using braid, it's always a good idea and bring uh, a good pair of scissors with you. And now, as you can see, we've got our weight our bead and it comes right down to the swivel and in that order. Now, if you're down rigging, you can even add an extra bead. And sometimes as the bait moves down on the bottom, it clicks and clacks together. And some striper fishermen say that that actually brings in the striper. But whenever you're trolling, like I've done in the winter, one bead is good enough. All right, now we're gonna attach our leader. So let me go ahead and grab that. Guys, I've just got a big old spool of 20 pound mono. And what I do is one arm length, okay? One wing span. And that's the amount that I will use for my leader. Go ahead and cut this right here. Go ahead and put this back in the back of the kayak. And we're gonna go ahead and attach this now. You know, depending on what type of knot you like to use, go ahead and use it. I'm just gonna use an improved clinch knot right here. Run it through the bottom side, back through the top. That's what makes it improved. Always wet that a little bit. And then we're gonna cinch it down. And then finally, what I'm going to do on this side is I'm going to clip it, but I'm not going to clip it super tight. These big fish can oftentimes pull a little bit of that line through. And so I'm just going to clip it right there with about, I don't know, about a half inch remaining on the tag end. And our final step is guys, I like to use just small treble hooks. And this, this goes for any of my planer board setups. I love to use these treble hooks and because I'm using planer boards, this treble hook will never get swallowed. It always gets stopped well before that. And we're gonna go ahead and do another Palomar knot and attach this onto the fishing line itself. All right, let's go ahead and cinch that down. Perfect, and the last thing I'm gonna do, once I've cinched it down, I'm gonna go ahead and trim it. So now we've got that set up. So we've got our half ounce weight, our glass bead, our swivel, and then that leads all the way down to one wingspan. And so that's a good four feet. And that connects to the treble hook itself. And, and now you attach your bait. Now, when it comes to attaching a planer board, let me let out a little bit of line. I'll show you guys how to attach a planer board. I've been using water bugs um, all winter long, and it's a, a really good company, tried and true. I'll go ahead and pull out one of the planer boards. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your main line after you've let out, I don't know, anywhere from 15 to 30 feet. You're gonna go to the swivel side here. And quite literally, I'm just gonna swing it on through that swivel and onto the main line. So this part of the swivel, all it does is it just kind of keeps your um, planter board attached to your line, but it also slides. So at this point, there's nothing that's gonna stop it unless you attach the clamp. So what I'm gonna do is you always take the clamp end, you're gonna face it up toward the top of the rod, never down below or else you do it backwards. And you're just gonna clamp it on about one third of the way into that clamp because when a big fish bites, what you want it to do is detach and then slide all the way down until it hits the bead. So we'll go ahead and just pretend that happened. So as I'm reeling in now and the fish is on, that planter board is sliding until it hits the bead right there. And you really do want it to stop there at the bead. If it continued to go all the way down to the hook, it potentially could dislodge the hook from the fish's mouth. And so you wanna make sure that you definitely are careful of that. So guys, when it comes to the kayak setup, I typically just run two planter boards because any more than that, it just gets really chaotic and crazy, especially when you hook something that's running all around the boat, you could just have a, a big mess. So all winter, I've been running one free line out the back with just um, a weightless line with a, a shiner on it that swims all over the place. Typically the brown trout like to eat that one, but occasionally so do the striper. And then on the outside wings, I've been running anything from a quarter ounce weight all the way down to a half ounce weight and I've uh, just been letting out that line. So guys, on average, I'm letting out about 20 to 30 feet of line, connecting my planter board, letting it out another 20 to 30 feet, and then I'm locking it into place and then going for a ride. Typically, I'm going one mile per hour, and I like to cover water wherever I can find bait. A lot of times you can find the seagulls. On days like today, I didn't see any seagulls, but I was still able to mark bait down deep, and that's when I got my bites. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did. If you'd like to see more kayak adventures on Boone Lake for big striped bass, I've got a fun one right here. Or if you prefer to see something a little bit different, I've got a fun fly fishing video right here. Until next time, tight lines. Green.